Hey guys, so I have not done a video in a minute. I've been busy. I have been working and working on my own project. So I've just been doing these videos, of course, for fun. I love fantasy. I love d and I love all this, right? And I've been working on a book of my own. It's coming along very, very well. I, I, I'm happy with it. Uh, for my first time, nothing's going to be perfect, um, especially for me. Now, I don't know about publishing-wise. Uh, this is just a quick little note. I just want to go ahead and say this now, and then I'm going to get into the book. But I've been following a lot of these publishing companies, and I'm not happy with what they're doing and like the way they're handling business. It's nothing that I want to be a part of. I've been watching it, and it's just it's getting worse and worse and worse is what it looks like. I don't want to be a part of that, and I don't want anything that I make to be a part of some of this stuff. Uh, it's just, it's bad. And to see how they're also treating employees, and to all this kind of stuff. I mean, not just on the retail side, but like in the store and in the warehouses. And it's, it's rough. Um, it's not getting any better. I don't want anything I do to be a part of that. It, that's just how it is. So I have been building my finances properly for a large distribution of my own books. And I'm happy to say I've talked to some people um, who might be interested in helping me out with a art, art book to go along with it for the first 50. And the first 50, of course, I'm going to do something special as far as the uh, uh, publication of them and what kind of book and style and make them bougie. So uh, that's just going to be something I'm going to have fun with. Uh, if it turns out to be better than, you know, what it is, and it picks up, you know, more than I thought it will, then I might do more. We'll see when the time comes. But without further ado, let me just go ahead and get on to this book that we're going to be talking about today. And that is The City Under the Sand. Okay, uh, Jeff, I think it's pronounced Marriott, Marriott, Marriott. Um, he's, he's the author. Now... I looked him up because I was like, I'm not very familiar with Jeff Marriott. And it it showed why. He's a good writer. I mean, he is. He he has a way about about him that is fun. It does not remind you of medieval times at all. It doesn't really remind you of like common D D or like you read like a uh, an Ed Greenwood or even a Bob Sal Ari Salvatore. You know, you you read their their stuff and you're like, okay, well he kinda has the lingo, the dialect and stuff like that. He doesn't really have it in his books, and it becomes apparent why. A lot of his stuff is based off of licensed properties, and a good example, you know, uh, Criminal Lines, DC Comics, um, Superman issue, Supernatural books, Star Trek, um, that, the list goes on. It's like he's just, anything that he has a fancy in, um, he's, he's, he's kind of touched. And Something that's kind of interesting about this as well, and I haven't really talked about the publishing factor with Dark Sun, but uh, I'll probably bring it up in this because it's kind of interesting when you think about it. So the first print of City Under the Sand came out in 2010, um, which is odd since the first Dark Sun products were introduced in early 1990, uh, this, the box sets with TSR. Uh, they were with second edition. Which means this book was technically written under the guise of Wizards of the Coast. And the original owners and creators, TSR, didn't have anything to do with it? Okay. So, <laughs> now I think that does have its reasons. I, I do think so. Um, for example, this book is part of the Abyssal Plague series. And in fact, it's part three of the Prelude. Uh, so, it does make sense that Wizards of the Coast would bring back Dark Sun if only to show the wide-reaching effects that the Abyssal Plague has on the realms. Um, so it does make sense, like, why they would, okay, why are we going to dredge this up out of nowhere in 2010? Um, now, we also see this uh, afterwards. It comes out under the Crimson Sun novel, which is another book involving the Abyssal Plague series, um, and that was printed in June of 2011, and the Death Mark, which... I do believe we talked about, which was printed in December of the same year. And, uh, of course, then it just falls off because they didn't do any real publicity into Dark Sun. So, yeah, that's going to happen when you just start printing stuff in the modern 
modern people don't know what they're reading. But as for people who've been around for a while, uh, people who <laughs> grew up old school, I don't know what you want to call that, um, people who know what they're looking at, you know, it was really exciting when you get to see something like this drop, especially after such a long period of time. Uh, of course, the Dark Sun universe is extremely unique, and the way that magic works in this world is probably one of the best mechanics out of majority of fantasy. It really is. Uh, even Wheel of Time, with all their weaving of... I mean, even it, you know, pales in comparison to the, the concept that just to use magic, you're destroying life to use this magic. It's, it's a beautiful concept. But, um, and I'm sure it's not the first thing that's ever done it, you know, but I think to take it to such a scale is one reason how come Dark Sun, I, I love it so much. Um, it's underappreciated. And I, if Wizards, if they do want to dabble with Dark Sun again, I'm very concerned uh, for Dark Sun's well-being. As such, I don't want to see them destroy something so good because it happens. It happens so much, especially in this modern world where there's just a small group of people who are forcing their opinion and they have to destroy everything that's beautiful. It's what it is. They hold on to something so tight they crush the flower. So we're going to go ahead and get into the back matter of this. So back matter. Uh, when Eric, a half-elf with a rare natural ability... With the way, which is the psychic, in this they call it the way, which is pretty much being a, a telepath or having um, psychic abilities. Um, so is brought into a search for a priceless trove of metal. Uh, he would rather keep the uh, his head down and live a simple life, but nothing is simple in the city of Nibane, where uh, with its reclusive ruler, the Shadow King, and in a world where metal is the rarest of commodities, Eric's way with the metal is an even rarer talent. As Eric heads into the desert with a treacherous band of adventurers, <laughs> allegiances are tested and secrets are uncovered, but sometimes secrets hidden by the sands of time are best left that way. When Eric and his band release an evil perhaps greater than the Shadow King himself, it is a race against time to see who will harness its power. So, uh, oh, here we go. So, also, it's, you know, featuring the third chapter of the Gates of Madness by James Wyatt's five-part prelude to the world-spanning Dungeons & Dragons event, The Abyssal Plague. Okay, so, sorry, it's pretty hard for me to see that. My eyes, I think, are getting worse from reading and all this stuff over... It's not, it's not the easiest back matter to read. But, so... Just to touch up on that, um, yeah, the thing that they release, and I'm not going to get into spoilers, it is extremely powerful. It's kind of confusing concept um, because out of all the times we, you know, they talk about in, in the in the lore, a dark sun, and in the books primarily, right? You don't really you don't really see, you know, things like what they're going to talk about in this, and it makes it unique. Because it's canon. It's absolutely canon. So the things they talk about in this show that these things do exist in the realm of Dark Sun. And it brings into light a whole, you know, a plethora of possibilities. And they do state, even in the book, that the power of what they're releasing is equivocal to, a, to the Shadow King, which... You know, I'm not going to get into what he is and all that kind of stuff because I'm I'm sure if you've watched my videos, you, we've talked about it before, um, and and how the the <laughs> the lords of like the cities here are just outrageously powerful. But to say that this thing that they're releasing is as powerful as him, mm, ah, mm. <laughs> that's a really hard statement to push. Because they build them up. And this is an issue that you will have with a lot of these books. And there's a reason. It is because there's all these authors handling the source material. So one of them might say the Shadow King is this strong. While the other one says, eh, he's not that strong. He's going to be more like this. And it's the same issue with Magic the Gathering books that they have. Uh, they have so many people juggling the facts that they're like, I don't want that anymore. It's going to become this. 
what's canon at that point? It becomes a very gray area. Um, the best thing we can do is try to go back to the original source material. That's the best thing we can do. Um, so I don't know if he actually would be as strong as the Shadow King. But hey, is what it is. So uh, Eric and um, his, his half-giant Goliath, pretty much, buddy, um, who I love him. He's great. He, he pretty much just carries around a giant club with himself. Uh, and Eric is a uh, blacksmith. So, without getting into too much spoilers, just kind of out of the intro here. This city is uncovered by the by nature, uncovers it in the desert. And it sends a signal out in its own way to the Shadow King to say, Hey, there's a treasure trove of metal here. Come get it. And, um, which, it also kind of puts out odd loopholes or things it doesn't explain. And I'm like, okay, so how did that happen? Because I can't get too much into it. I don't want to put any spoilers out there for this book because as, um, as I know, I've already talked about Jeff, but he's a great writer. I know I said that his, his writing style is different. It's not very medieval. It doesn't have like the same kind of. Uh, nomenclature for words as you would expect from a book like that he's a great writer i mean he is it's a fun read uh it was it was it was very fun to read um it was you know had kind of comical bits to it they bring in it does feel too it does feel like i'm reading people playing a D, &D module or a campaign at especially when they get out into the desert and they start traveling uh it's very it, it's very kind of true to how that would feel <laughs> Uh, like when you're sitting in a lobby and you're watching a game or you're in the game. So I give him props, you know, good job, Jeff. Uh, uh, you, you did good, boy. So uh, I have, I've got to say this book is, it's got its own little twists in there as well. So go ahead and assume like what, what you see is not, don't take it as face value. This book does actually come at you with a couple of softball twists. And it's nothing hard hitting. Like when it, when it, when the twist comes, you're like, okay, okay, that was kind of cool. Um, so it's not what I was thinking. It's going to be something else. Or they're going to have to handle it like this. Or why are they doing that with them? Because what what does she have planned? And it, it's really, it's really kind of cool. Um, he obviously is very good from seeing the point of view of the world from his character's point of view. And that's rare. Um, as as an, a writer myself, it's difficult. In fact, half the time, if I'm having trouble getting into the mind, mind space, I will have to get away from the keyboard and I'll just do laps around a room and talk to myself and strike up a conversation and then try to get into that mentality to see what that person would say. It's actually a pretty fun little thing that I've just picked up over the, the years of writing. So... Um, I think, I think he's, he's hit the nail on the head with this book. I'm actually kind of upset that he didn't get to do more with, uh, Dark Sun, because I think if they had given him more source material to work with, he could have, he could have been a, a great boon to the Dark Sun world and, uh, you know, get maybe a trilogy like the Trapper One out there or something. Um, but... That's about it. I don't want this video to get on too long. I do want to say that there are some twists and stuff like that. The ending, I enjoyed the ending. It, I've read better endings, yeah. But it's gonna, it's, you're going to be kind of pleased. I'll leave it like that. Like, he's not going to leave you, you know, wanting more. You're going to be like, okay. All right, well, that was a good, it was a good one shot. And um, I'm happy with it. And that's what it's going to be like, you know. And it's not a hard read. So the book is only, um, it should only be, uh, uh, what, about four? Yeah, about almost 400 pages. It's not a hard read at all. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a very easy read. So the 400 pages kind of just melt away, you know? And by the time you're done, you're going to be like, that was, that was a good book. You know, that was fun. You know, I'm not, I don't really regret it. I feel like I learned a lot about the world and also Eric's way, which is really unique. I, I love that too. So good job, Jeff, uh, because that he has like a psychic link with metal, which brings about another concept. 
So is the metal alive? Is it living? Does metal live or does it just like speak through images? Because it's kind of what it is. Like he has a mental link to swords and stuff like that. So if he touches a sword or something like that to him, um, you know, he can he can get flashes of the things that Blade has done or the piece of metal has done because he has a he has a psychic link to metal. That's really cool. And being that he's a half elf kind of builds onto the thing where he's like shunned by society already because in Dark Sun, you know, the elves are kind of like bandits for the most part and they're like tribesmen. And so being that he's a half elf, usually it's via rape or something. So people already look at him like, you know, he's he's trash. And it's I do like those kind of underdog stories and Eric is a fun character. There's a couple of other characters in here that are kind of fun. There's one of them who I personally think died too early. I'm sorry. There's two of them I think died too early because I was enjoying some banter between them. Now, there's a couple of other characters, a swordsman, girl, and one of these... I don't, I don't want to get into that. But uh, they also are very well fleshed out. I enjoy the concept that this girl is kind of like a, a seer. She's kind of can scry naturally, especially in her dreams. It's, it's a, again, it's a fun concept that adds like a secondary plot point in there. And uh, when things come to a, a headway and the stories begin to kind of merge together, you see what he had, what he had planned, and you see, you could see it from the beginning, but it doesn't doesn't make it any less fun. Uh, he did a great job. I enjoyed the book. I enjoyed it all overall. Um, and again, like I said before, I'm trying to be a little bit harsher with my ratings. So I'm going to give this like a 6.9 or 7, you know, out of 10. Um, maybe 6.9 would be more more true. And I'm going to say that because while he did a great job writing, there are some, some things, like I said before, that I'm like, hey, that doesn't really make sense. And it's hard. I get that, especially when you're working with source material that you haven't been working with for a long time. Um, hell, people who make stuff up themselves have a hard time keeping up with it because it's it becomes a lot. You are you are making a world with lore and everything. And it's easy to say, oh, this person wasn't going to be here, or how did they get there? How did this thing know that this was going on or that this was even a person? Um, and that that is, there's, there's some, some of that in here. But dispel your disbelief and jump into this story. It's a fun read. I highly recommend it, guys. Uh, and thank you for taking some uh, time to at least watch this video. I'm going to cut it off before it gets to 20 minutes because that's just too long for a video about a book. Yeah, everybody, y'all stay safe. Have a good day, and I'll catch y'all later. Bye.